Hello, this is John Spielman um, with a roundup of the penultimate round of the 43rd Dortmund um, chess tournament. Um, it's, um, it's been a fantastic tournament um, with lots of bloodshed and um, the bloodshed hasn't always been in the direction that it's supposed to be. There's been plenty of, there have been plenty of games in which the supposedly weaker player has beaten the stronger one. Well, um, so Nispianu started off with a couple of wins and was leading, but at the moment I'm actually doing this before the round finishes because there are two wor very worthy games which clearly are not going to be the games of the day. Um, one is Kramnik against Nispianu, where Kramnik is trying to win a rook ending. I'm not sure if he's winning or not, but we'll find out when he finishes. And the other is Nipomnishi is trying to beat Nidic, and looks like pretty good chances. Anyway, um, the games that have finished, as I'm talking, are Caruana against Hu Yifan, which is the game I'm going to show, and um, Georg Meyer against Wesley So, which has ended in a repetition. So, um, this is, um, th 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 this is, this, this is a suitably, um, bloodthirsty game. And by the way, if anybody hasn't seen the game Wei Yi against Lazaro Bruzon, from a couple of days ago in China, they should definitely find it. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, sadly, a lot more bloodthirsty than this one. Anyway, here we are with Caruana against Hu Yifan. Obviously, Caruana is seriously intending to beat her, and doesn't. And from the moves he played, you, you can see as the game goes on that he's prepared to take some risks. Um, okay, so this is almost a Nimzo Indian. If we had. Um, knight f6 rather than d5 and after a3 takes takes something like f3 knight f6 would now be a nimzo but caruana plays e3 sorry knight f6 e3 sorry if knight f6 f3 we'd have a nimzo and now we have a, that that would be um a zamish variation and if we go back then after e3 we've got a normal line but one in which black played d5 very early so if I go back to the beginning, if we had a normal Nimzo Indian like this, which would be for e3, then black would normally castle play c5. If d5, a3, takes, takes, we get the position we had in the game. Anyway, let's revert. See where we get to. Oh, it does go right to the beginning because of the change of move order. And we'll go up a few moves. And there we are. And c6, quite an unusual move, a white square move. She clearly wants to do things in white squares with this move. Um, I think, but anyway, there we are, that's what she did. And he played a4. I'm not entirely sure why he did this, but um, perhaps thinking about playing bishop a3 at some moment. Stopping b 5 e things, possibly. I can't see when b5 is going to happen. Anyway, that's what he did. And later he played a5, which sort of justified it. Knight f3, I was expecting bishop d3 and knight e2. And for the moment, they're playing moves. b6, which is indeed a white square move, takes before black plays bishop a6, takes bishop d3. I don't know whether he could have delayed this and tried to play um, bishop a6 in one move. Now he played knight, e he castled. I thought he might play bishop takes, knight takes, queen e2, I guess knight c7 probably, and then c4. And just, I quite like this sort of position for white. You try to use the bishop on c1, um, you try to prove that the bishop is better than, bishop and knight is better than two knights. Of course, it may or may not be true, but that's what you're, that's what you're trying to prove. Anyway, he castled, c5. She's playing really standard chess. Rook e8. That might be inaccurate, but certainly it's not bad. a5, and this is quite a tactical move. Takes, takes. And his point is that he's going to be able to take in b6 in the middle of this. And um, if c4, by the way, he would also have played. 